This is Simon video. In this video, we're going to handle a type of problems, which is divide and conquer. We have done that before, but this is an assignment for you to do. So we're going to simulate a web server that handles concurrent requests. So for a web server, let's use a rectangle to represent the web server. When the user interacts with the web server, the user basically sends a request to the server. The problem with the web server is that it's exposed on the internet, so everyone is able to access it. So most likely, you will have not only one user, but multiple users. And some very popular web servers could have millions of requests per minute or per, even per second. So let's just use two users to illustrate the scenario. So when the requests are received on the server, what's supposed to happen is that First, the web server would need to enter these requests into a request queue. So let's use these little squares to represent the requests that are queued in the request queue. Second, there has to be something that is monitor the queue. So let's say this is the monitor request queue. Once the monitor sees a request, he needs to let someone to process the request. So you would have something, maybe we can call it request processor. So these are the essential elements of a web server. Requests are coming in from multiple users. They're queued in the request queue. And then there has to be a monitor that constantly monitor the queue. Once there's a request coming, the requests are assigned to the request processor. So this is going to be a console application. Don't worry about processing HTML. Don't worry about processing anything. Just uh, use uh, a console application to simulate the web server right? and you're going to create a console application that accomplish the elements that i illustrated on this diagram but first of all let me show you how it look like and how the performance is if we were to do this in a single thread as right? so i only have one thread here as you can see first we say server is running please type exit to stop so then we enter a non-stop loop and within it i'm going to try to read a line from the user if the user enters exit then the loop is going to stop and we're going to exit out the program otherwise it's going to process and this process method is right here and we're using a thread.sleep to pass the thread for two seconds so this is to simulate a longer processing time and after that, we just simply output processed input. In the assignment that you're going to work on, you're going to use the same process input. Okay? So this is your processing, but you have to implement your own monitoring. You have to impl implement your own processing. You have to enqueue and dequeue the requests while you're monitoring and processing the requests. If we were to run this, you're going to notice that the read line here is blocking and then after a longer period of time right two seconds this is output then the console is ready for another user input so during this entire time everything is blocked nothing else can be processed so let's run the application all right it says server is running type exit to stop so i'm going to say a and then i hit enter and it says processed input is A, that's after two seconds of wait. So if I say B and then I try to hit B, I try to hit other things. See, I'm trying to continuously enter one single letter at a time. Now I just stopped entering anything. And you can see that every time it just waits for two seconds, right? So the performance is like that. Apparently, there is a I.O. queue that is separate from our program. So while I'm talking, it's still trying to process whatever that is entered into the I.O. queue. OK, I think it's done processing. The last input I entered is actually ADF. All right, so you have seen the performance. It's pretty slow. It takes two seconds at a time. And then during that time, everything's blocked except the system I.O. queue. All right, so your task here is to follow this diagram and you need to have all of these elements you need to have a request queue and then you have to have a monitor that monitors request queue and whenever there is a request that comes in you assign that request to the request processor 
Okay, try to work on this yourself. And in the next video, I'm going to show my solution to this problem.